Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Adam here with Indy Farm Life. Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to turn one of these manual backpack sprayers into a battery powered one. Now, if you're like me, you are absolutely sick of this lever. It seems like a big upgrade when you go to a backpack sprayer versus a little one gallon, two gallon hand pump. But after a couple tanks of this thing, your arm catches on fire. So let's fix that. I'll show you guys how to do it and it's not that expensive or difficult. Now this is for the Roundup backpack sprayer. All these are a little bit different, and as you can see, I've already started taking this one apart. So I will show you what needs to be done for this one, but if you have a different model, it's gonna be just a little bit different. But the important component of all this is gonna be the battery power and the pumping mechanism. So if you're familiar with this pump or any pump, there's often a whole lot more going on down here. Like I said, I've already disassembled it. Here's my look something a little bit more like this. You're gonna have a couple other pieces hanging off here that I've cut. Basically, any little bolt you see down here, you need to take off and start pulling the arm off. You can pull the rod out. Um, on this one, the plunger will have been up in here, kind of help also holding it in, so you pull that down out. The big piece of any of this is that you need to take the guts out of it. So on this one, before I cut it, this is what the tank looked like. This was all one giant piece and was up inside of this tank. So you pull it out from the bottom, so on this Roundup one, I simply took a hacksaw and you cut the top off. And then this was also on the bottom kind of sticking out. And you do the same, just make sure your cut is below the outlet. This piece is important as this is where all your chemicals will come out. So once you cut that off, you can set that aside. This is a little messy because I've already done work to it. But you'll see here on top, there is a washer with a screw. Same on the bottom. What I did was took that screw and washer off on both ends and I pumped this entire thing full of sealant. I just used some silicone that I had laying around. Why do you do that? These tanks work on pressure only. If the tank is full and there's no pressure in this, in this tank, then when you pull the trigger, nothing will come out. You guys, you guys know that. So we have to basically eliminate the, the pressure side of the equation so that this tank will gravity feed out of this spout here and go into your pump. So again, take the washer and screw off on both sides, fill it full of silicone, I did the same thing on this little inlet here, and then I put everything back. There's no way the chemicals are ever gonna get through this piece of the housing now. So effectively, everything will have to exit through this hole. Now I also added this notch to allow fluid to come in from the side. Let me show you why. I don't know how well you're gonna see it, but there at the bottom, if that notch was not there, there'd be about an inch or so in the bottom of the tank where fluid would not be able to get down to that exit hole. So you gotta cut that notch so you can fully drain the tank. So as far as the tank itself, we are now ready to set this up so we can be begin pumping fluid through it. This will get put back in here. There's a gasket on here and there's a plastic washer that goes around the whole thing to lock it in place. And from this exit point, we'll go from here to the pump and from the pump to the spray wand. I know that was very quick and dirty. If you happen to have this exact model, hopefully that's helpful. If you have another model, just know that you're gonna need to eliminate the pressure tank from your actual sprayer in order to let the fluid gravity feed and not be stuck in there. Um, another thing that's nice is that when you start taking, you know, this giant piece out of the middle of there, you actually gain a little volume in your sprayer. It'll make your side markings off a little bit, but you can always fix those. All right, so let's go look at the meat and potatoes of this setup. Let me show you guys the componentry we're gonna work with here in order to make this happen. And everything will be linked below that you need. This one's gonna be the DeWalt kit. You could buy really any adapter for any battery on the market. Um, Milwaukee, Cobalt, Ryobi, you name it. <clears throat> this one's DeWalt because I have DeWalt tools. So uh, really nice because you can just use the battery packs you currently have versus having a, you know have another manufacturer party. I actually ordered most of this as a kit from Amazon. So let's talk through what came in the kit. First you have the battery adapter piece. So obviously this just slides onto a normal battery and it does have an on off switch right here on the front, which is nice. It also has a nice fuse holder here and came with a couple little fuses. These are probably overkill because they're 30 amp, but that's fine. And what this is, is a low voltage protection board. So these batteries do not have a built-in BMS in them, at least I don't believe so. And I think that most of the time they rely on the tool you're using to tell it when to shut off. And so what you don't want to do is discharge these batteries down beyond 
80% like any lithium ion battery, this will facilitate shutting the system off before you over discharge the battery. So right now you can see we have it turned on, we're at 20.4 volts. So what this allows you to do is set the cutoff point on the battery power um, so that you won't damage this battery. Once the power leaves this low voltage circuit and moves into this box, I may ultimately replace this with a reducer that just goes straight to 12 volts. Uh, this actually has a control knob on it that allows you to change the output voltage going to whatever you're trying to power. So in this case, uh, if we turn the circuit on, we got 20.4, 20.3 volts going here. If we click this on, you can see that it's got a little output screen here. And so I can dial this thing up all the way to the 20.3 volts that are coming out of the system, and those match. Great. Or I can bring it down to 12 volt, which happens to be the pump I'm running. I suppose, you know, if you had a pump that ran between 12 and 20 volts, some, some pumps out there state that they can use kind of variable voltage, then that would work. Uh, the one I have is 12 volt, um, but we'll see how it works. Like I said, it may replace that, but it came as a kit. And then here is the little pump I have on this. It just got a positive and a negative. So that will then ultimately get wired to this output box, positive and negative. Two second overview of the wiring for you guys. They give you diagrams. The Amazon link I have below also has a nice pictorial for wiring. And these are actually made for power wheels or you know, peg, perigo, whatever you want to call it. So it's kind of co a cool setup. You put this on your power wheel and you want to switch to these kind of batteries, then you can you know, change the voltage being delivered to the motor, i.e. change the speed for your kids. So real quick recap of the circuit. You got the battery, the battery harness, your on off switch. Come out of here, you got two leads with a fuse, your positive, your negative, use a little connector. And the wires coming out of here are pre-wired. So you got your positive, negative in, then you have your positive, negative out. And these are labeled here, you know, your positive, negative. Um, bring those into this. And then from there, when it comes out, these are your positive, negative. I won't use white in my actual build. But your positive, negative out, that will then go to your positive, negative on your pump. And then you have your little voltage reader there as well. And this uh, rheostat comes pre-wired to the thing. And then you have, you know, flow in, flow out, pretty straightforward. Um, there's, these pumps are all over, dime a dozen on Amazon, but we'll see how this one how it works. This one's 1.4 gallons per minute. So how am I going to put all this together? Well, I took an old piece of plywood, painted it black, and cut it to fit. I'm going to sit right here on top of the stand, and then I'll start placing all my components on here, you know, the battery, the pump, the little box and whatnot. To secure it, I have some conduit clamps that I'm going to use and screw through from the underside. So I'm going to get to building. I don't want to show you guys as I fumble through all this, but I will show you, I'll stop it and show you steps along the way that I think might be important or it could be a completed build. I don't know. We'll see how this goes. Okay. We went from nothing to something. Pretty much got it completely finished. I ended up doing everything off camera. I'll catch you guys up, but I didn't want you to have to sit with me through all my stumbling blocks. So let me walk you through how this is set up and then I'll let you know any hiccups or headaches along the way. So as we discussed, this is the battery holder. It's got two spots for screws. So I just used some little wood screws I had, three quarter inch, to pin that down. From there, power comes out into the fuse holder. And here's the negative. Uh, I used these heat shrink butt connectors in a lot of places where I wanted a more permanent solution than the little um, clip down guy back here and I'll explain that one in a moment. But I used heat shrink butt connectors on these. So power leaves this bank, you have your switch on the front and the swirly wires, they all come into here. And so this is the voltage protection, protection board. Again, this is the in and then you have the out. So positive, negative in, positive, negative out. So once power leaves the low voltage box, it's gonna be these two wires back here, the positive and negative into the box where you can control the voltage out. Got my little knob in here. Um, this just got screwed down again with four wood screws to the bottom of this. And I put some 3M tape on the underside of this box. Uh, then you have your positive and negative leaving the box. So whatever voltage you decide to dial up is sent to the pump. And the voltage meter is right here. I just kind of zip tied it back. It may or may not work. We'll see. Uh, as the power travels from that box into the pump itself. I use this quick connect 
just in case the pump ever goes bad, which I don't have, you know, immense faith in this lasting long, long time. It's a $20 pump off Amazon, but I have a quick way to swap it out. Um, and I also do have the voltmeter uh, also pigtailed into that little switch. So that wraps up the circuit. Uh, we'll talk about the functionality of this here in a few moments. As far as the lines to the pump, I do have a little bit of a bend right here in this. this hope this kink doesn't inhibit flow. If it does, it's not too hard to rework. I put the pump on the board first. What I should have done is hook the line up first, made sure I had a nice sweeping curve uh, with no kinks first. Um, but just in the, with the placement I have here, it's just hard to get this without having at least a little bit of a kink. So, so again, may have to move this or get a different hose, something a little more robust. But I wanted the outlet on the right side. I often like to carry the wand with my right hand. One thing I didn't show you that but worked out really nice using this little box is, is that I just drilled a few holes in the front of it. So each wire is kind of held in place as you look at the front of that with a little hole there, which worked out well. And again, I can close this when I'm not using it. I can even close it when I'm using it, maybe put some kind of latch on the side versus the front. Uh, but I think you might want to let a little air in here. It might get a little warm in that box. It's not going to be extremely dusty when I'm using it, but perhaps in storage. And then as far as mounting the board, I used some little one-sided conduit clips. And again, those wood screws, they were number eight three-quarter inch not sure that really matters but if you guys wanted to know everything so here's the underside number of clips just kind of pinning it in place it's very sturdy all right let's talk about this board for a second and then we'll give this thing a test flight all right just put a battery on if we hit power initially it's going to show the voltage coming out of this battery again this is not a reducer this is just making sure that this battery doesn't over discharge and damage itself tools like this dewalt drill right here have the built-in protector like this already in it anyway 20.4 volts currently coming in if we click this once it'll show you that this is set right now to turn off at 15.8 volts if you double tap it you can then see the little cursor kind of start blinking there and you can change this up or well I missed it cursors blinking all right now it's going to show up at 15.9 volts I think DeWalt says 15.3 volts is where their batteries typically shut off. So 15.9, fine, so be it. Little belt and suspenders approach. And then the button on the right shows you uh, the number two. This indicates that if the battery circuit were to go dead, the new battery you put on, the system will not turn on unless it's two volts higher than the battery that was previously being discharged. So, so for example, let's say you had it shut off at 16. If you had that at plus two, the new battery you put on here, the circuit would not light up unless that battery was putting out at least 18 volts. If you're pretty diligent about making sure you're not gonna let your batteries go down more than a bar or two, and you watch it steadily, then you know you may not need this piece, but this was a kit. Okay, let's give this baby a test flight. I just filled it with about a gallon of fresh water. I already realized one nice thing about having this box here. Having this lid on here is nice because you can close it when you're filling this with water. This is an open circuit board. You don't want to get it wet. So when I was filling it, I just put my foot on top of here to keep this closed. Uh, long term, I may just find a way to keep this closed all the time. I don't know how much heat this will produce, but let's give it a whirl. Check for leaks. Looks good. This is one thing where I may want to eliminate this, but let's turn this up to 12 volts. Dialed right to about 12 volts. Kind of dancing there. We're fine. Yeah, if there's already an improvement, that little setup there on the end. Sure. But um, tell you what, before I put it on and walk around, let's just actually set it up right here since it's just water and kind of watch it as we spray out. Still priming. I think I need to increase the voltage on my sprayer. There we go. So you want this to be reading, I think, 12 volts when you're actually spraying. I'm already really excited about this. not terribly loud I mean, it probably sounds loud in the camera but dad joke I'm pumped
All right, I think we're dry already. All right, let's check it. It's still sprinkle a little bit. Let's see. All right, shut off. You know you're trying to build pressure. All right, power off. That on-off switch is really nice to have. Did a pretty nice job of emptying all the products. There's a little splish splash down there. One thing I noticed though when I opened this thing that I may have to add is I don't want to just drill a hole. Maybe I'll put a check valve in up here or in the lid. Before this tank was pressurized, pushing fluid out. Now we are pulling it out with a pump, so we're creating a vacuum. So we may need to put a one-way valve up here to allow air in so that this thing doesn't you know vacuum out on us so far i am very pleased some of that could be cleaned up a little bit more um this could use some better ingenuity engineering but i think it'll work for my purposes like i said i might just put a little piece of tape on there i don't know how hot or warm this will get if really at all um, but it's nice to have it covered for fluid purposes and it may be a good idea to maybe at least put some electrical tape on that quick connect there just so the water and chemicals are splashing a little bit. We're not. All in all, I am very pleased. And what's nice about this is this is going to cut down on my weed eating. So you might be saying, all right, Adam, that's cool and all, but I don't want to go through that headache. Well, you don't have to necessarily. You can go out there and buy one of the prepackaged units that they sell. But I already had this sprayer. The pump was $25 or $30. The wiring kit may have been $20. And beyond that, Nothing more than some conduit clamps at Home Depot or Lowe's. Pretty cheap stuff. But back to buying the commercial or prepackaged units, the DeWalt unit is like 250 bucks. When I was at Lowe's this morning, I saw a Ryobi unit on sale, I think for 180. Like that's just ridiculous. In this setup, I have a ton of DeWalt batteries. If I switch to Milwaukee, I can easily make that change. This pump can be replaced in minutes if it goes out. The tank's not gonna go bad. I can change any one of these components at my disposal and never be left hanging dry. I will link everything you need to do this exact kit down below, including the sprayer. And I'll also link some of those prepackaged units down below too. Time will tell. I'll make an update video at some point, but I'm really excited to put this thing to the test and just up my spraying game around here. If you live on a large piece of property, you know how difficult it is to keep up with trimming and spraying. And while a boom sprayer or spot sprayer is always an option, sometimes you need something like this to get into the smaller areas, flower beds etc. So I'm looking forward to putting it through its paces. I hope that helps some of you guys out there if you're looking to convert your backpack sprayer into a battery powered one. I think it'd be well worth your time. So if you would, hit that subscribe button, come back and see me, and we'll see you guys next time.